During our first week, we introduced the concept of analytic function and the concept of integration along the curve in the complex plane. These two properties related to differentiation and integration of the functions in the complex plane turn out to be closely connected. And this connection is one of the most fundamental properties of analytic functions, which renders complex analysis so useful in applications. It is cast in the form of Cauchy Integral Theorem. And it goes as follows. Suppose we have some simply connected domain D and function f analytic inside this domain. And suppose we have some closed contour gamma belonging to this domain. Then the integral along this closed contour always vanishes. The key to proof of this beautiful identity lies in the geometrical interpretation of the complex numbers. So let's proceed as follows. We decompose our f function into real and imaginary part, as well as our differential dz as dx plus i d1. And then our complex closed contour integral is decomposed into the sum of two real-valued integrals u dx minus v dy plus i the integral of u dy plus v dx. And that kind of integrals are familiar to those of you who study the theory of multivariate analysis. And indeed, we are dealing here with two real-valued two-dimensional integrals along some contour in two-dimensional plane. The Green's formula allows us to transform that kind of linear closed contour integrals into an area integrals over the surface bounded by that contour. And the Green's theorem states, if you have a linear closed contour integral pdx plus qdy, then it can be transformed into an area integral over the surface circumvented by this contour of dq over dx minus dp over dy dx dy. And the Green theorem holds as long as function p and q have continuous derivatives inside this closed contour. Now let's apply this formula to our integrals. The first integral, u dx minus v dy. Obviously, u plays the role of p, while minus v plays the role of q. So it can be transformed into minus dv over dx minus du over dy, dx dy. The second integral, here v play the role of p, while u play the role of q. And it is transformed into the double integral of du over dx minus dv over dy, dx dy. But our function is analytic inside this contour, and that means that it satisfies cauchy riemanns conditions. Let's present them here. du over dx equals dv over dy and du over dy equals minus dv over dx. But this is precisely the combinations we have in the brackets, and they vanish due to cauchy riemann conditions. And that's how we complete the proof of Cauchy integrals formula. Now, the theorem has a very important consequence, and it goes as follows. Suppose we have some closed contour integral of function f of z, which is not necessarily analytical inside this contour. Then, of course, this integral doesn't necessarily vanish. But then, using Cauchy integral theorem, we can prove that this integral stays the same for any deformation of the contour as long as this deformation doesn't touch the singularities of the function inside this contour. So let me formulate it in geometrical language. So here is our closed contour, let's call it gamma, circumvented in the counterclockwise direction. And suppose there are some singularities of our function f inside this contour where our function f is ill-defined. Now say let's shrink our contour. So let's put some points A and B and introduce a shrunk contour. And let's introduce suitable notations, gamma 1 and gamma 2. Now what I'm going to argue is that the integral along the contour AB plus gamma 2 is equal to the integral along the original contour gamma. And the proof goes as follows. First of all, let's consider the integral along contour gamma 1 plus ba. Well, obviously, that's a closed contour, which doesn't have any singularities of our f function inside. And that means that this integral vanishes due to Cauchy integral theorem. Now, let's consider the sum of two integrals, namely the integral along contour gamma 1 plus ba, and the integral along contour gamma 2 plus ab. The second one is precisely our shrunk contour. Now let's split these two integrals into segments. 
the first one into gamma 1 plus the integral along contour BA and the second one into gamma 2 plus the integral along contour AB. And obviously, these two integrals along contours BN and AB cancel each other because they are essentially an identical integral but passed in the opposite directions. So the sum of these two integrals is equal to the integral along the contour gamma 1 plus gamma 2, which is nothing but our initial contour gamma. And this basically completes our proof. And one more interesting remark. The proof of Cauchy integral theorem was based on a particular form of Green's theorem. And for the first time, as it happened, that particular form of Green's theorem was addressed by Cauchy in his treatment of complex analysis. And the formal proof of this formula was given by Riemann in his dissertation on complex analysis in 1851. Isn't it interesting that this very well-known fact from the theory of multivariate analysis was first addressed in the context of complex analysis? Mm -hmm.